Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Unit Lost, or welcome to Unit Lost, whatever, and welcome back to Destiny. Now, this time, I'm going to check out the tower. This is the last city on Earth. This is kind of like the, well, it says last city Earth. I don't think it is the last city on Earth. I don't know what the hell I'm even talking about. But this is, well, there you go, Tower Plaza, the last city Earth. This is sort of the, um, it's like the hub. Like, th this is where you go to kind of upgrade your character. Uh, well, not necessarily upgrade your character in, in that manner, because you can upgrade your character wherever the hell you are. You just basically press, um, uh, whatever, what is it, uh, uh, options, and you can, like, upgrade your skills and stuff. But you can buy items, you can upgrade uh, all kinds of stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run around and show you what the hell is going on. So I'm just making my way around the city. You can kind of see what it's like. It's not massive. So it, it's, it's kind of small, but it is... It's quite well made. Like, you, you can see a lot of effort has gone into this. There's a lot of detail. Uh, and it is visually impressive. Now, these people with, like, speech bubbles on the head, they are other players. Now, I'm guessing that there are loads and loads and loads of instances, and you just randomly get put into an instance of this city uh, because it would just be too... It would just be overloaded with players. Now, I would presume if you're in a party or a group, you can go to the same one. Um, obviously, I'm not in a group or a party, so I can't really test that. But I would imagine that is the case because it would be pretty stupid if that wasn't. You might have just noticed on the guard there as I ran past, I could hold uh, square down to show me the map. And it would give me the layout. I don't think I'd do that in this video, which is kind of annoying. It would be nice to show you guys the map, but it, it doesn't really matter because I kind of run around most places anyway. So what I'm doing is I'm going towards the uh, Warlock. I guess you could call it the Warlock Trainer to uh, hand in my quests I've completed. The uh, the Dark Within, I think it was, and uh, I think there's maybe another one. But she's going to give me loot, and kind of that's what Destiny's about. It's A lot of people compare it to... Well, a lot of people... It doesn't really matter what a lot of people say, because it's what I'm going to say. It is very much like Borderlands meets Halo. That is it's the best way to sum it up. It's just a, a more kind of in-depth, detailed version of Borderlands. It's obviously not stupid and over the top. It's serious, and it's uh, got a very strong Halo aesthetic about it, I guess you could say. Um, so this guy, he's a crucible handler. So I'm like, who's this guy? Maybe I can have a chat. This and I can. Is what I got. So he's a, he's a vendor, but he sells purple items, and they're level 20. Now, obviously, I'm not level 20. I think I'm level 8 or something like that, or level 4, 5. I don't even know. I'm not level 20, so <laughs> I can't have any of this, but it's kind of nice to see that it... It's sort of there and, and whatnot. Now, I did level up. So, the little green plus sign by my uh, Voidwalker class is telling me I could level up. And what I'm going to pick is Energy Drain because it's the only one I can have. I presume you unlock these in order. Maybe you don't. Maybe you do. I'm not too sure. But the ones I've unlocked, they have been in order. And you could see, like, some of my equipment slots and, uh, and stuff. But, I mean, as you can see, it works really fast. Like, there's no kind of user interface lag or game lag or anything like that. It's, it's really responsive, which is good. So this guy is uh, another quartermaster who appears to sell uh, vehicles. Now, they, uh, you can summon a vehicle when you're kind of in... I think you can do it in any... You can do it in the PvP, and you can do it in the uh, the PvE content. And it's kind of like a, a jet bike thing from Star Wars. And it's very fast, and it's good for getting around the map really quick. And it looks like you can get custom versions of that based on your level. Uh, you know, and obviously you have to buy them and stuff, which is pretty good. Now, she is the Warlock uh, Vanguard. Now, she's like the... I'm going to call her the Warlock Clash Trainer. That's good. But you can see, like, I'm handing quests into her, and she's like, would you like a reward? And I'm selecting the reward. Now, I did say in previous videos, I kind of like the way the UI works, but if you think about it, like, where you use the analog sticks to navigate around it, it smells of a PC UI for a mouse. So is there a PC client on the way, in the works? Who knows? But as you can see, there's a lot of Warlock armor there. Now, I think this stuff uh, is the stuff I've got anyway. But it's pretty nice how it shows you it actually on the model. So I think that was like an arm wrap or something. Now, this helmet, obviously, you can see this uh, close up. I think I buy this, but I, I quite like that. Again, it's like this attention to detail seems absolutely off the scale for this game. Now, they've spent tons of cash on it, so you would expect that anyway. You know, <laughs> you want like massive amounts of polish and, and such and those things were symbols which i think go next to your name um i noticed when i was uh, in the various pvp matches and that's me pressing the share button by mistake in the various pvp mass uh, matches people have got different like icons and stuff next to their name so i got a uh, a new chess piece which i'm going to equip uh, and it's blue i quite like blue unit lost blue uh, you know i'm not complaining but it's nice that you can actually change your appearance with the different bits of armor uh everyone likes customization right i like customization you know, I think that it's a really nice looking 
clean UI as well. Minimalistic, clean like UI design. I really like it. Uh, now this guy, I tried to speak to this guy, but he's a he's a Titan Vanguard, so he's for the Titan class. Now I'm the Warlock class, so obviously you know I can talk to him, but I can't buy any of his stuff because I'm not a Titan. Makes sense, right? <laughs> Now you might see the green diamonds all over the uh, the screen. It's that's kind of the the, the game's way of, of telling me where the vendors are. You can see it says the gunsmith. Go to the gunsmith. I think I go to the gunsmith in a moment. Um, but it's just showing you like kind of around the area, what's what, you know, where to go, what you can interact with, um, and that's basically what I'm doing. So I think I go. Yeah, yeah. This is pretty interesting. This is the. Um, that's a challenge. I, the crypt guy okay now you can buy these engrams off him these encoded engrams and i think it randomly generates an item so kind of like diablo you know where you can i think it's is it adria uh is it adria no she's the witch whoever it is kadala is i can't even remember you give her stuff and she uh, she give you random items i think this is kind of the same sort of thing you see how it it didn't actually deplete what was in stock but it's gave me a, a, a weapon which obviously i'm going to check out so i'm like oh i've got a new weapon what is this well, it turns out it's a level 6 um, full auto rifle. I'm not level 6, so I can't use it. So I think I must be level 4 then. Um, but that was fairly interesting. Now, this is the Postmasters. This is like the mailbox. I'm guessing you can send items to your friend and all, yeah, well, to your friends and stuff. That'd be really good. You know, I think it's going to be a really strong aspect of this game. The whole, like, community co-op thing. Playing with your friends. But you'll notice that I just picked up a green engram. Now, I think this is a higher tier of, well, it's, it's, it's going to produce a better quality item. But look what it says. We need to go to the crypt guy to uh, have him decrypt it. So we're going to go over there and give it to him and see what he gives us. And I'm going to spoil it for you now because he gives us a pistol and it's actually pretty good. Uh, well, it looks pretty good. And we can use it and it does more damage than our weapon. So, you know, whatever, let's take it. So look, it says straight away, would you like to decode the engram? Yeah, okay, let's decode it. And it's give us the Maverick Mark 32, which is a big pistol. Actually, I quite like this model. It looks pretty nice. As you can see, it's green, so it's uncommon. It's a better quality, you know, it's not grey. I think it's potentially following the World of Warcraft item uh, colour system, so purple is probably similar to Epic and, and stuff like that. Um, so as you can see, I've got an absolutely massive, like, magnum attached to me now, good lord. So I'm going to run over there now to the... This is the weapon guy. He basically... Well, he's just a weapon vendor. Um... Now this is just a you know part of the the quest. It's telling me to pick a weapon. I think I picked the uh, the assault rifle, oh, well the auto rifle. But yeah, the Marshall A. I'm sure I get that um, because I don't have a rapid fire weapon. Now actually, when you're in the game, you can like when you're in the like the PVE or even the PVP. Actually, in PVP, I'm not sure you might have to do it when you're dead. But in PVE, you can definitely change your weapon on the fly. So you have like all of your weapons with you. Or as, as many as you can carry in your inventory. And you can swap them out, like, basically by holding option down. Uh, well, options and just swap swapping it out. There's no kind of... It's slightly irritating. It would be nice to just kind of go through all your weapons. But I guess that could be a bit of a... Maybe a balance issue or something like that. Especially in PvP. But I think it is restricted in PvP. But again, don't quote me on that. I mean, this is like the first day of the alpha. So a lot of stuff is still kind of... People are trying to work it out and, and stuff. Now, it's telling me to go to the shipwright. Uh, now, as you can obviously guess, this is the person who basically sells ships. Now, you've seen it at the start of this video, and you've seen it in some of the other videos. Before you, when you load into the game, you're actually in orbit in your ship. I don't know whether it's going to be like this when the game goes live, but you, you're in orbit around the planet, and you decide where to go. So you can come to the city, or go to a PvP mission, or go to a PVE, and you actually descend into the the atmosphere, or fly to a different planet, which is really nice. And you can actually customize that ship. So you can give it a different appearance. And you probably think, well, style, it makes no difference. What the hell are you talking about? Only you can see it. Well, no, because when you're in a group, you can see everybody's ship in the group, like in a little fleet. And it's pretty nice. Um, so, yeah, look, she's like basically going to give me uh, rewards. But I think I've already got these. Because I'm pretty sure I've got the Arcadia class jump ship. I hope you like it. Maybe I don't, but I'm pretty sure that's just the standard one. So you can see there's new different vehicles. So I could potentially buy that, but I need to be level 8 or, uh, again... Uh, I don't have the glimmer for that, which is kind of like the currency. Interestingly, though, most all, all of the ships, apart from the last one there, only require level 5. So, I quite like this, because it's like another layer of customization. And again, if you're playing this with your friends, you can show off like, oh, look at my ship, check this out, and all of that. And there's also a massive missile there. I mean, I, like, 
if you've been following me on Twitter, which is at Unit Lost Gaming, you should follow me on Twitter as well, guys, because you get loads of updates. You will see that I am impressed with the game, but I am a uh, I'm like a diehard PC gamer, so for me to play, and this is just some sort of crazed vendor. Um, Good morning, Guardian. Yeah, but for me to play uh, like FPS games on console, it is very much out of my comfort zone, and it's very. I like going into fits of rage, like a rage fit at times, because it's like, oh god, I, I know what I want to do, but I just literally cannot make my make the guy do it, make him aim and shoot. So I, I really need a lot more practice. So could this be the game which actually gets me to play console FPS? I don't know. Um, I'm impressed with it so far, but I mean, I guess if we look at some of the stuff, like apparently this game has cost over 500 million to produce. That's including its marketing budget uh, and everything included. That's pretty insane, you know, and is it a game, does it feel like it's worth that much money? Well, it has a high level of polish, you cannot deny that. Um, I, I mean, I don't know, I'm going to need to play it more to kind of come to a, a conclusion on it, but I just wanted to show you guys the uh, the tower, the last city um, on Earth. That That is whatever the hell that is, I don't know. Uh, so yeah, there you go, guys. <laughs> I'm Asylo, this is Unit Lost. Check out the channel, subscribe and all the rest of that stuff and comment, and I'll catch you next time. Toodaloo.